One of the perks among so many of getting to host this incredible show is I get to work with the same department as the folks at evening. Now, while well, can't gossip around the water cooler these days, I think a round of hot topics is the next best thing. Kim Holcomb and Angela Poe Russell join me for a very fun and very personal chat. Check it out. So something's happening this week in my life and producers suggested I talk to you ladies about it. Getting my first mammogram ever. Ah, I'm a year a late. <laughs> what should I expect? I would say I expect it to not be as bad as maybe you're afraid it will be. Okay. Because for me, it well, I've had one and it was not as bad as my mind had imagined it would be. Yes. And I would say expect to feel good that you're doing something for yourself. Because how often do we put off our appointments and we cater to everyone else? And I feel like when I get my mammogram, it's me saying, me first, dog on it. Yes. <laughs> Stick up on my health. I completely see that. That makes perfect sense. And it's true. I mean, the reason I'm a year late isn't because I didn't want to go. It's because I just, you, as parents, as mommies, we don't have time sometimes. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. Now, this is a yep. reminder that I was due last month, so I need to go <laughs> for my annual. There you so go. You. <laughs> I will say also, though, just like from a totally physical perspective, the word pancake may run through your mind at some point, <laughs> and that's okay because they know it's what okay. they're doing and it's all for a good cause. All right, all right, we'll get through it. fine. We'll get yeah. through it. All right, we got this. All right, thank you for the pep talk on that. Um, <laughs> speaking of taking care of yourself and putting yourself first, I love, last week, Kim, you posted about Botox. Listen, I'll be right up there honest. I get the Botox, I get the Botox. But do you feel like, and it's not something I would have admitted years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's become less, there's less of a stigma surrounding it now? Yes. However, it's still something that I feel like people don't talk about and they don't need to. I mean, it's totally up to lots of people don't get it for very valid reasons and that's cool. But lots of people that do just don't talk about it. And I don't know, I guess I just kept thinking like, why? Why is there any shame in doing this thing that is, if you're doing it for the right reasons, which is for you, that it is mm -hmm. your choice to get it done because you like the way that it makes you look. Don't let anybody else tell you you need it. If they do, then you don't get it <laughs> as a reaction to them telling you that. But I guess I feel like if you're doing it for the right reasons, there should be no shame in it. And to me, it's sort of an extension of like coloring your hair or wearing makeup. We all do these things that we feel like um, make us look better to ourselves. And I guess I felt like that kind of fits in that basket. Yeah, it's interesting because I did feel shame, I would say 10 years ago when it was a stylist who said, now's the time to get it when you're really young, so you won't need a lot of it later on. And I was like, oh, but I'll be embarrassed to say, and I definitely don't feel that way now. And I haven't gotten anything yet, but I have been grabbing brochures and looking around. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I've been like perusing to see how this works. But here, here's the thing that I think people don't necessarily talk about outside of, you know, private conversations is if people are doing it right, you don't really know they did it, right? And so people right. always think about the horror story of like, whoa, you got like Amity, I would have never known, you know what I mean? So it's... Yep. It's one of those things, if you do it right, no one should know, but maybe it doesn't have to be. So I like that you're speaking up about it. I'm all for it, Kim. And also tell me if I'm one of those people that's going a little too far. You I'm, have, you know what? I don't want to be, I don't want to be cat lady over here, okay? That is not I think what I'm going with. Everyone should have an accountability partner on that, right? Because everyone yep, seems yep. to take it too far. Like, not everyone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it's a danger. Yeah, and I think, and I think it's also important that the person you choose, like the woman who help, who does my Botox, she says, if I say, oh hey, let me try this, let me try this, she'll be like, mm -mm, no, come to me in five years, we'll talk about it. So it is important. Yeah. If someone's trying to sell you a lot, I say, no, you know, red flag. Yep, totally. really great point. Um, all right, so from fillers to kids' toys, I mean, I can't even <laughs> think of a transition for that. No. Uh, Especially because the first toy that Derek, our producer, sent us is a pooping flamingo. And we all have kids. What is it with the pooping thing? I didn't no. have any pooping toys when I was a kid. Well, but those dolls did exist, you know, that you'd have to change the diaper. I never okay, had one okay, of those. Yeah. It was too okay, fancy for my family, but yeah. But yes, I agree. It's not like the outwardly. No, there's like, it started with the reindeer pooping, I feel like, a few yeah, years ago. And now there's reindeer. a whole line of, mm -hmm, there's a yeah. whole line of toys like there's this. There's a whole just 
fascination with kids and that process, you know, poop emojis. My daughter was actually a poop emoji for Halloween one year. But I also think when I look at the characters over the years, the Elmo potty time was my favorite video. And he actually had a song like there's so many kids who do it. <laughs> and you'll do it. You'll use the potty. <laughs> So it's one of those things that if you can look at the flamingo do it and then the kids like, hey, I can do it too. Okay. Yep. No? Well, <laughs> I like I it. Agree. I agree, but also like my 14 year old son would also think that the pooping flamingo is awesome <laughs> just because it poops. So maybe it serves purposes across all ages of children. I don't know. I love that, that you just sang the song um, because I actually didn't hear that song. I wish I had when my kids are potty training it's because it would have been helpful. Yeah, and I feel like potty talk is a thing in my house. So, so we'll just move on from the pooping flamingos to other <laughs> ridiculous things that you can buy for the holiday season, the Floby. Now, did you hear that George Clooney claims he uses a Floby to cut his hair? Now, do we do need to explain what the Floby is? I, I've never seen it until I saw this George Clooney story. So it was oh. is it like a vacuumy thing? Yeah. So, okay, essentially, I'm going to use this roll of wrapping paper. Okay. So essentially... <laughs> you stick your vacuum to this device, the Floby, and the vacuum sucks sucks your hair in into the into the Floby, uh -huh. and it trims it. Now, no. <laughs> no, I don't know anyone personally who's ever did the, had their hair done with the Floby, but apparently the Clooney uses it. I I, I think there is a zero percent chance that he actually uses it. The one thing that you can always count on with George Clooney in an interview is that he is going to say <clears throat> the funniest things you've ever heard. And I don't know if they're always true. Huh. That's what I'm gonna say. I don't believe that. Have you interviewed him? Yes. And okay, he so is wonderful and hilarious and so smart. And I just don't think he uses a Floby. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I can't well, believe it. We're talking about him, so maybe that was the mission. But I have to tell you, some of those infomercial things are really good. Like my favorite product that actually helped me clean a lot of poop accidents in the house was this OxyClean stuff. I think it yeah. first came out in commercials, what, 20 years ago? Yes. Yeah. That stuff is magic. It is. And then the Snuggie, wasn't that an infomercial? I got a Snuggie. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, you're right. Yeah, OxyClean would be my number one. We definitely wish... have that in our house at all times. Did anyone ever get a sham wow? I really... Uh, no, I but I feel that I agree with you. I feel bad that I didn't because I did appreciate that commercial. His enthusiasm was unmatched. Yeah, unmatched, unparalleled. Search eBay for sham wow. <laughs> all right, we're gonna have more hot topics with Kim and Angela coming up later in the show. Also, we all have that one person on our holiday shopping list. You know, the one that's so hard to buy something for. But if that one is into the latest tech, we've got you covered. Coming up next, I'm talking to gadget guy Steve Greenberg about his list of musts for every techie in your house. And coming up a little bit later on New Day, we're talking to the author of a new book that explores the last years of John Lennon's life by examining the music he was listening to. We'll be right back.